Hi, I'm Margaret Martin, here today with two important topics on helping you age stronger with exercise. So the two topics we're going to cover today are the position of your tongue, whenever you're pushing, pulling, lifting, and carrying, and two, the position of our head when we're doing any of our exercises lying flat on the floor. So, position of our tongue. Most people, you know, they get an exercise book, they listen to an exercise video, nobody ever talks to them or mentions tongue position. You know, in the thousands of people I've had a chance to work with over my lifetime, I've never had anybody go, yeah, yeah, I got it, Margaret. I know where my tongue should be. So I want to um, explore that with you today. So I invite you to go back to our standing posture that we talked about in episode one, because that's where we're going to um, challenge ourselves to see where your tongue position ends up. All right, so your feet are grounded, your knees are soft, you're thinking long through your body so that you're lengthening ribs away from your pelvis so that we're lining everything up. So finally, what I'd like you to do is take one hand, place it on your forehead. Now, before we go into it, when your hand is on your forehead, you're going to be pushing your hand into your forehead and your forehead into your hand. But I want you to be aware of what is happening to your tongue. All right, let's take a breath in and push. Lovely, if you need to do it another time, because you went, hmm, well, I'm not sure where my tongue was, do it a second time. Great. Now, for those of you who might have found that your tongue was behind your teeth, or kind of just in the middle of your mouth, or even just sitting down in your mouth, there's a strong chance that you were bottle fed. And so, and those of you whose uh, tongue naturally went to your upper palate, then there's a strong chance that you were breastfed. It's the way that our tongue has to function when doing, when bottle feeding as an infant or breastfeeding as an infant. And so the tongue position is so very important in allowing the deep neck stabilizers to function. That position of the tongue to the roof of the palate that gets developed with breastfeeding is critical in that it allows the deep stabilizing muscles of our neck that are attached to the base of the tongue to be anchored. Many of my clients, you know, will uh, have shared with me that, you know, they start an exercise program and not more than, you know, sometimes numerous times, and every time it's, you know, the tension in the neck or shoulder pain that limits them from progressing and moving forward in, in reaching the goals that they've set for themselves. But oftentimes, it's something as simple as the position of their tongue that's limiting them from progressing. So, one of the other things, along with all the posture and alignment that we spoke, spoke about, is whenever you're going to lift, push, pull, carry, and I don't mean it just weights. I'm talking about when you're picking up your grandkids, when you're working in the garden, when you're you know moving furniture, that you become aware of bringing your tongue to the roof of your mouth. The more often you do it, just like all of the other components that we talked about, the more natural it will become and eventually your body will just naturally do that movement because it'll go, that felt so much better and it will intuitively start bringing your tongue to the upper palate. In the meantime, if that's not where your tongue sat, you are going to have to mindfully integrate it into any of your exercises that you're doing. And now we're going to cover our second topic, the position of our head when we are doing any of our exercises down on the ground or any firm surface. So the two items that we're going to need to explore head positioning lying down is towels. So two towels essentially. 
hand towels are about the right um, size that you're going to need. The first one is going to be one that you can fold up. Um, I've rolled it in about five little uh, lengths so that um, it's about the width of my hand and the depth of my hand. And that's the space that's going to mimic the or fill in the little arch of my back. In sitting and standing, we talked about how important the position of the pelvis was because that dictated the position of the lumbar spine and the rest of the spine. So no different when you're lying down. So you want to have that first towel to support your lumbar spine from a neutral pelvic position. And then finally, we need another towel that um, right now I folded it into eight uh, layers that will allow you to find your optimum head position that we're going to cover and you know for you it might be eight layers it might be four layers or it might be no layers at all if you've had any trauma to your neck in the past and you feel that you need support in your neck by all means you can um, use a second towel or even a third um, you know in the same way that i'm supporting my lumbar spine here you can roll either um, a towel, you know, if you're not using it to support underneath your head, you can roll a towel um, to support your cervical spine. All right, let's go down and explore. So coming down through my side, I want this towel to be above my pelvis, filling in that space between rib cage and pelvis. So that's still going to be essentially in my lumbar spine when I roll onto my back. All right, just as we aligned ourselves in sitting and standing, we're going to align ourselves in our supine or back lying position. Feet will be hip width apart, knees are hip width apart, and they're kept strong, so they're not gonna collapse in or out or any which way, because that will affect the rest of your body. If you have the right depth of towel, you might find that as you settle your pelvis down, that you go, wow, that's my perfect little neutral pelvic position. And you're gonna aim to maintain the small of your back in contact with the towel whenever you're doing any of your exercises so that you don't feel you're being pulled off where it's going to start to change your neutral alignment. The next thing is where are our shoulder blades? So sometimes our shoulder blades kind of get stuck up, you know, depending on the surface. So let's just find our delicious neutral, belt, neutral shoulder blade position so we get out of being pulled forward. And when we are doing things uh, exercise-wise, just having the palms turned away and up, that helps us to open up through the chest wall as well. Now, coming all the way up through head and neck, if when you're on your back you feel that your neck or your cervical spine needs some support, then by all means, you can um, take a towel just as we did to support our lumbar spine and you can use that towel to support your cervical spine. Now this is the towel that I want to talk about is what's underneath my head here. One of my pet peeves is on all the TV shows and movies that we see whenever we see people lying down they're always propped on several pillows which is terrible for the neck. It's you know just supporting and duplicating all our you know forward head postures with our devices these days. When we're on our back it is the perfect opportunity to actually have gravity help us to realign our spine in its optimum position. Now ideally we should be able to have our ears in line with our shoulders so that means that my eyes would be looking straight up to the ceiling. Now, if you're coming down onto the floor and you find that it's very difficult 
and it's pulling in the back of your neck when you try to keep your eyes to the sky and you find that you're actually getting the weight you know drifting to the middle of the back of your head and your eyes are actually pointing slightly behind you then you are going to you're basically um, being told by your body that these structures are too tight and using some support would be beneficial for you now I don't want you to use so much support that you're just you know not allowing an opportunity for the smaller uh, muscles of your neck to stretch out so you're going to explore you know do you need 16 towel layers do you need 10 towel layers do you only need four towel layers so wherever you start you know you're going to aim to place you know the number of layers of towels that allows you to get your best head posture but also feel a very gentle little stretch at the base of your skull and by gradually progressing over time reducing those towel layers you will continually elongate those structures so with time you might find that you could um, gradually adjust the number of towels that you use underneath your head. So I like to think about it like a book. You know, if you're starting with 100 pages under your head to keep your head in, in good alignment, you can gradually make that less. Now it would be like, you know, pulling back a page a day. So it might take you 100 days to get perfect alignment in your head and neck, but you know, when you look back, you know, what's a few months to optimize your posture? Be patient. It took you way more than 100 days to um, make structures within your head and neck tight. Give them time to stretch. If you like this video, please subscribe below. So that you don't miss any future episodes, hit notifications. For full exercise program on aging stronger, and on building stronger bones, click in the description box below on exercise for better bones. Thank you for joining me and have a lovely day.